Hi everyone, this is Usha Pandit, your Mind Springs English teacher. Today I am going to do a lot of very useful phrases with you. You would pick these phrases up if you are a reader of English or if you listen to a lot of English on news or TV channels or uh, movies and songs, you would pick it up. But if you do not watch these too much, then I am going to give them to you so that you at least know some of them. But it is a good idea to do all that listen and speak and read and all that stuff, immerse yourself in the language. So, the first one I have got is make to make waves. Now, it is not literal, none of these are literal. So, the literal meaning would be to uh, how can you make waves, you are not the ocean, you are not God. So, to make waves as a phrase when you say she is making waves or he is making waves or the new actress is making waves, what might you mean? Or the new blogger is making waves, what might you mean? You mean that that person is popular, he is known, going viral, perhaps sometimes even controversial, but everybody knows them, they are talking about them, they are making waves. So, that is one to remember. The second one I have got here is take the moral high ground. So, a lot of people take the moral high ground. They kind of talk down to you, they are contemptuous, they believe that they are more, they are superior, that they are morally stronger than you. They take the moral as if they would not make any mistakes. That is taking the moral high ground. Okay? So, you might say the politician took the moral high ground when he said that his party had never committed such a crime. So, you might give a sentence like that. Let us look at the third one, find yourself in a tight spot. What is a tight spot? Or sometimes they say a tight corner. All of these are places where you feel trapped, where you feel that you cannot get out of it because there is a hardship, there is a dilemma, there is a problem. So, the man when his lies were caught by the committee found himself in a tight spot. He could not escape. The fourth one is maintain status quo. What do we mean by status quo? Status quo means no change. So, the committee decided they were not going to make any kind of reforms in the education department. They decided for the next two years they would maintain a status quo. That means all the exams will be the same, the syllabus is the same, the method of questioning everything is the same. Maintain a status quo, do not make any changes, do not move. The same status, that is what it means. The next one is it is a rat race. When do you say everything is a rat race these days, is not it? So, you find in education students are competing fiercely, in the offices people are cutting uh, one another whenever it is possible in order to show themselves as smarter, greater, better. Everyone is out to make more money, trample over the other person and go ahead. That is a rat race, that is not human, that is not normal. We are all behaving like some kind of a race where you put animals, hungry animals and you put some food in front of them, the kind of race that you see there that kind of competition, that sort of cutthroat competition is called a rat race. So, that is what it means. If you say it is a mouse trap, what do you mean? If you say it is a mouse trap, it means that there is temptation. So, if a situation is such that you are tempted to walk into it, maybe it is a business deal, maybe it is a political uh, partnership and affiliation, it can be anything. But if you are tempted to walk into it by giving, by putting some sort of a, 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 a you know dangling a carrot there in order to tempt you to come and take that deal, then you are walking into a mouse trap. That is what they would say. Another next one is racing against time. When do you race against time? Hard to race against time, is not it? But if you say, you are racing against time, it means that you have deadlines to meet. 
or there is a life and death kind of situation. So, the woman trying to save her son from the burning house was racing against time which means she has no time left and she really needs to act very quickly or it could be the fire brigade racing against time in order to save as many lives as possible from the burning building. You could be racing against time for a deadline where you have an interview and you need to get that job and you are racing against time maybe literally or it could be figuratively. Maybe you have to post in something, maybe you have to write something and you have finished, you are racing against time. Rumor cannot be snuffed out, that is the next one. The rumor cannot be snuffed now. Now, what do you mean by rumor and snuffing out? Snuffing out literally means killing it. You know, if you have a fire and you put something on top of it, the fire dies out, you have snuffed it out. So, when you have something that is festering, a rumor is something that will pers be persistent People are talking about it everywhere and you just can't seem to get it out of the system. No matter how many explanations you give, it is not possible. That rumor cannot be snuffed out. So, they fester and they cannot be doused. The other word you would use is the word doused. Doused also means to put out a fire, right? So, therefore, that is used for rumors. The next one I have got is a lot, a lion's share of the budget. You would have heard this. This is not a very difficult one. A lion's share is always the largest part. So, if a lion were eating something, the lion would eat its full and then leave all the leftovers for the hyenas and the vultures and the other animals that want to come and peck at it. So, the lion's share is always the largest share you have. So, the largest share of the budget is kept for defense. The largest, the lion's share of the budget is goes to education. The lion's share of the budget goes to IT or roads or infrastructure. You would have heard this in political language, the lion's share. You can also do the lion's share of your time, for example, is probably allotted to something that you want to pursue in the future, maybe dancing, maybe engineering, maybe artistry, whatever. The other one I have got is put up a lackluster performance. I like this word lackluster performance. Instead of saying a mediocre performance, instead of saying a bad performance, you know where people say bad, not good, etc. A lackluster performance is a good one. So, performance does not always have to be on stage. Performance can be in an office, performance can be in a classroom. Anywhere if you are putting up a poor show, which means your papers are not up to the mark, your work in the office is not up to the mark, then you would be putting up a lackluster performance. Wake up and smell the coffee. You must have heard this. So, what is it? Why should you wake up and smell the coffee? It means that you are asleep, you are so fast asleep. If you notice the smell of coffee in a house, you will find that it the aroma of coffee is so strong that you it will wake up people who are fast asleep. It is that that not just that strong, but that also aromatic, also attractive, also very, very you know delicious. So, when you say wake up and smell the coffee means you are so deeply asleep that you cannot even smell the coffee. So, somebody is telling you wake up be aware, see the reality, see what is happening around you, you are so fast asleep. So, wake up and smell the coffee. Look at the reality, look at the way our economy is slipping, look at the way our streets are um, full of potholes, it can be anything. Wake up and smell the coffee means it is time for you to stand up and protest and get what is due to you. The next one I have got is consumed by jealousy. Why consumed? Consumed because jealousy is an extremely eroding emotion. Jealousy eats into you. Jealousy makes you obsessive. So, consumed is it kind of literally eats you. So, consumed by jealousy, not eaten up by jealousy, but consumed by jealousy. To hand something on a platter. So, what do you mean by, oh, he got it handed over on a platter. 
he got the job on a platter. You have heard people say things like that. He got the presidentship on a platter. What means is that he did not have to work for it. He was just sitting there and somebody brought it and gave it to him. Something that is desirable, something for which you have to compete, something that is going to be really hard to get. This person got it on a platter. Somebody put it on a plate and said, here is the presidentship. Here is you, you get to become the PM, whatever, whatever it is that you got for free. So, to hand something on a platter, he got it handed to him on a platter. The next one is to seem to be at sea. What do you mean by to seem to be at sea? To seem to be at sea means if you are if you are at sea means you are confused. So, the students got the new pattern of paper and they seem to be at sea, which means they do not seem to be able to crack it, they do not seem to be able to understand. So, people were at sea meaning they had no idea what was happening to seem to be at sea. The next one is to take a stance, when do I take a stance? I take a stance when I take a side, a stand, a position, then I am taking a stance. That means, you are seeing me as a person who is let us say a liberal, you are seeing me as a person who is a feminist. So, a stance is a big one. Okay? So, you do not say take a side for, you can even take a stance in an argument, take one side of it. But normally, if you take a stance, then you are holding on to your convictions, you truly believe in it to take a stance. Fallen prey to. Who falls prey to something? If you have fallen prey to something, you have become enslaved, you become addicted, you cannot do without it. So, you have fallen prey. Normally negative, you have fallen prey to drugs, you have fallen prey to alcohol, you have fallen prey to the wily charms of a gold digging woman, it can be anything or a gold digging man, why not? Women are very successful these days. So, therefore, you can fall prey, right? So, that is the expression. To rake up an issue, that means to bring up something that has been forgotten from the past, you rake it up. Rake it up means literally dig with a rake. A rake is like a sort of a garden tool, you literally dig it up. It, nobody knew about, nobody remembered it, and now you are raking up that old issue in order to make a point or to win an election or to, uh, to, to create a kind of a scandal, anything. So, to rake up an issue is to bring up something from the past. The last one for today is somebody is no small fish. So, if you say he is no small fish or she is no small fish, then what you are saying is that person is a person of influence of position, the person has a lot of power and he is no small fish. That means be careful. So, the police did not touch the managing director of the company that was polluting the waters because he was no small fish. That means they cannot just arrest him without due diligence, without a lot of investigation, without being a hundred percent sure that he is indeed involved in the crime because he is no small fish. So, I hope you enjoyed those phrases that I did with you. I will do some more with you. If you like it, make sure you share the video, you like it, buy the book writing with ease. It has got a lot of phrases, huge amounts of phrases. It is not an exercise book, it is a reference book www.mindsprings.in and Amazon, you are likely to get that book. So, keep abreast guys, make sure you are constantly learning new stuff with English and very soon you will be amazing. So, till I meet you again, keep smiling.